So my argument is, I don't doubt Paul had a vision. How do you know? How do you know? I'm talking about Paul's claim. How do you know? Paul said that. What's your name? Paul. What's your name? Your name's Paul? Yes. I'm. What's your name? Brett. And you're from the States. Are you on vacation? Preaching. You're on vacation here? I wouldn't call it vacation, missionary. Oh, you're on a missionary work? Are you a sinner? Sorry? Are you a sinner? What do you mean by a sinner? Sunni. I'm a Sunni. Sinner. No, I'm not. I'm not Sunni. I'm no, not Shia. I'm not a sinner. A sinner. sinner. Okay. Someone that sins. Sinner. Someone that breaks the law. Oh, of God. I see. Oh, a sinner. Sorry. Do you break the law of God? The law of God. Um, let me put it this way. In, in my understanding of salvation, God prohibits human sacrifice. He prohibits the killing of the Messiah. He prohibits. He prohibits any shedding of blood of a human kind to forgive sins. In Islam, God is most gracious, most merciful to those who turn to him in repentance. Unf unfortunately, well, I'm giving you my answer, but we do not need uh, a human being to suffer horribly and to torture to death for God to forgive us. In Islam, God is gracious and shows mercy to people. And that actually is the teaching of Jesus in the Gospels. If you look at the earlier Gospels, say in the parables in Luke, that is, the, that, is the, the, that is the Gospel. Sir, do you break the laws of God? Would you, where are these laws found? In the, in the Bible? The Ten Commandments. Right. They don't all apply to me. It's the you, problem. Do you lie? Let me explain to you why. Can you, can you let me explain to you why. Do you lie? Okay. Can you let me answer? Right. I, I'm not going to answer even if he interrupts. One of the laws of the Ten Commandments is to honor the Sabbath. I'm not an Israelite. I'm not a Jew. I follow the final dispensation of God to mankind, which is given in the, the Sharia of the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom lie? be peace. Therefore, I do not follow all the Ten Commandments. So you don't lie? Right. So it's not, do you follow the Ten Commandments? Yes. But do you honor the Sabbath? Yes. You do. Yes. See, see, on a Saturday, you don't do any work. No, Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. No, no, no. no. The Saturday. He is. The Sabbath is not Jesus Sunday. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. He is the do Sabbath. Do you eat pork? Can I ask? Sorry, just do, to help him. Wait a second. Sorry, Hold just on. to help him about lying. Yes. According to the Excuse Bible, me. no Excuse one me. can, only God cannot lie. Is that you get true? it? That's, that what, true? Well, oh, that's okay. the Bible, that's the Bible okay. saying. No, it doesn't. Only God cannot lie. That's not true. Because God can cut, stop any plan of anyone Bible to prove him a liar. Bible's not, Bible's but not unfortunately, it says in 2 Thessalonians that God sent a spirit of deception onto the non-believers. So God, according to Paul, so you, God, God you caused deception and lying to, to I, take place in the unbelievers. You can't even my question. Well, of What's course, your I. No, your but I don't know. Does Excuse me, lie? can I. Sorry? Does he lie? But only God cannot lie. If he said to you, I see you tomorrow and today is dead, you, you will prove him a liar. You don't want me to show you this, do you? So no, I don't. Letting, you're not going to answer the question either. No, because I'm talking to him, that's why. Of course why. I lie. Okay. So you've broken the law of God. I, 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 I can't have two conversations at the same time. Sorry. You forget that you're a woman, you can multitask, I'm a man, I can't multitask, I can't do this and this. Have mercy on my gender. Someone in this land Have a chat with my friend Nazan. And they say they're sorry, yeah. are they still going to be punished? Depending what? Will they be punished for the crime no, that they... Of course not. Okay, dude, can I, can I... Oh, I, 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 I have... Of course they let me, Of course not. Of course can they I, can I, oh, 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 oh. You're telling me... I, I think he's given up on me now. Okay. I, I, I do, I have broken most, not all, I haven't murdered and I haven't committed adultery. So broken but I, I've broken some of the commandments in the Ten Commandments, yes. So how are you forgiving? Um, because God forgives my sins. Why? Because he is forgiving. Because he knows... No, dude, dude, he, dude, dude I, don't, I don't need a commentary. Is dude, God, he, he forgives. Is God, is God holy? Do yes, you? yes. So he's a holy judge? Yes. So how can a, a good judge forgive you without because he, any punishment? Because he's merciful. That doesn't make sense. That's okay. not a good judge. Can good I ask you are, you, are you a father? Wait, hold on a second. No, no, you've asked me lots of questions. Let me ask you a question. Are you a father? Yes. Okay, you have kids? Yes. You have young kids? Yes. When they, when they do something wrong, do you always punish them? Not every time. Why not? Are you not just? I am just. Well, why do you not punish them all the time and every time they do wrong? Because it depends on what, what, what they do. But why don't you punish them every time they do wrong? Are you not just? Wait, wait a second. Okay, I'll answer that with this. Mm. Am I a holy God? No. Okay, well, there you go. That's right. So are you saying you should punish your children every time they do wrong? No, no, no. I'm saying that right. I am not at the standard of God. Right. Okay. But you're saying your God is holy 
but he's not a good judge. No, I'm not saying that. Let me explain what I'm saying. So the, God, the God in Islam, had, let me explain, because maybe, maybe we need to explain this. In Islam, God has many attributes, many names. He is holy, he's just. He's also merciful, and compassionate, and good, and so on. Many, many, perhaps 99 names. Now, God in his wisdom, another um, name of God, Hikmah in, uh, in Arabic, can choose whether or not to show mercy to someone, so someone who has repented, turned around, resolved not to commit sin again. God can have mercy and compassion on that individual, or if that person is a stubborn uh, rebel who persists in their wrongdoing, God can punish them. Now, why does God do one with... Uh, hang on a second. Well, go, 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 no, you see, God is not a machine who must do one thing all the time. In Islam, God has many attributes. Now, we see this, actually, that Jesus was a Muslim prophet. And because what he taught was Islamic. Let me give you an example. If you look at all the, most of the parables of Jesus in Luke's gospel, he manifests in his teaching exactly what I'm saying. For example, the power of the prodigal son, Luke chapter 15. Two sons, the young one, as you know, goes away. Uh, this is a parable. So it's, it's a parable about God himself, the father. The young son goes off. He, he rebels. He commits all sorts of sins. We won't go into those. He comes to his senses one day and he comes back to the father and says, you know, will he forgive me? Will he? And the father runs to the son, a very undignified thing for a Middle Eastern father to do. And, has, and puts a ring on his finger and throws a party because my son who was dead has now come to life, he's come home. Now what did the father do? Did he insist that the son be punished for his sins? Like in your, in your religion, which is not the religion of Jesus by the way, it's a, it's a man-made religion centuries later on, or did he, did he punish the son because he's a just God? No, he showed mercy and compassion to his son. Now, Jesus' teaching about God and salvation is quintessentially Islamic. Where you're coming from is a later religion called Paulianity. It's a religion invented by Paul and others. It's not the gospel of Jesus. So I'm calling you back to Islam, to the religion of Jesus, to the religion of all the prophets of God. Here's my answer. Jesus told that parable. And guess what? He actually is the sacrifice. So he can tell about a reconciliation because he is the reconciliation. He didn't punish the son. He didn't punish the son. That's the whole point. Your point is he must punish the wrongdoer. But Jesus in parable did not say that the son was punished. The, the, the son was shown compassion. That's the whole point. No, it's not the point. The whole point is that Jesus was punished. But Jesus is innocent. The son doesn't have to be punished. But Jesus is innocent. How can you punish an innocent? Person. The for that, he who there is no, no justice sin, in punishing an innocent no person. Sin, he came sin, that we might become the righteousness of God here. Here's another question I have. Were you born good? Okay. Can I just, I, know, I, I want to say something about this because I don't, I don't want you to get away with this. This gentleman has insisted on justice, that only a justice should happen, that God should punish the just. But do you know what he said? He said, in his religion, not the religion of Jesus, that an innocent man who's not guilty of any sin at all ever must be punished, Jesus Christ. Now that is not justice. You, in justice, the, the, the evildoer, the offender gets punished, not the innocent person. You have given me an example of gross injustice in the heart of your faith. And therefore, you have disproven your faith as from God. It's not from God. Wait a second. Wait because a second. you want to punish innocent people, in this case, Jesus, for your sin. And you say that is justice. That's injustice. It's a violation of justice. You have just refuted yourself, sir. You've just refuted yourself. No way. Jesus, Jesus said, no man takes <laughs> wants, my life. My God is just. Let me punish an innocent person. That is not justice, dude. Don't you get it? It's not justice. Can I ask you a question? Well, if it's going to derail the conversation. Probably not. I mean, with respect, it's going to... Sorry. No, it's fine because, like, because we are not talking about the same person. Otherwise, other people won't jump in. Sorry? So that we might become the righteousness of God. Did Jesus ever sin? Did Jesus ever sin? He didn't, did he? And yet you want God to punish Jesus. Because I'm not letting you speak. I let you speak. And then you're not letting me speak. Jesus Christ never sinned. Yes, you're right. He's innocent. But he took on the guilt of man as a sacrifice 
so that man could be forgiven. Otherwise, there's no hope for mankind. Everybody's going to hell. Yes. Okay. Let me here, respond. Here's another thing. Sir. Okay. Let me respond to this. Another thing. Well, you have no respond to this. The point is this: no man can. It's an important principle of the Bible and of Islam, which is why your religion is not biblical. No man can take on the sins of another man. It's there in Ezekiel chapter 20. The whole chapter is a refutation of the whole doctrine. Ezekiel, let me explain. He says there repeatedly, no, no son can take on the burdens or the sin of the father and so on. What you said goes against the teaching of the prophets who explicitly rejected this idea. And the idea that an innocent man, Jesus, should take my That's sin is not. We're looking at. We're looking at the passage. The no, hang on. You're interrupting me now, dude. You're, you're interrupting you know, you me. Quote the, the, the idea that God should punish an innocent man with someone else's sins, whether or not he takes them on voluntarily, is is morally irrelevant. The moral issue is the same. An innocent man. Right. You commit a crime. You commit adultery. And I say, right, judge. No. Let me. Let me I'll give, you, I'll give you a better example. Excuse me. You steal something. All right. You steal a car. Uh, and you get arrested, and I say to the, I go to a court, and I say, Judge, Judge, please, I love my friend here. I'll take the punishment, because he's a guest from America. I live here. I want him to have a good time in Britain. I don't want him to be punished for his stealing. I'll take the punishment, Mr. Judge. And what would the judge say in the UK? Yeah, all right, dude. You take the punishment. You go to. No, they wouldn't, because courts are are courts of justice. And I will get the punishment. Doesn't matter if I want to take your crime or your sin on me. That's not how justice works. The evildoer must be punished. The innocent person must not be punished for the sins of an evildoer. That is the teaching of the Jewish Bible. Look up the passage in Ezekiel 20. The whole passage refutes that. It is not. Look at it up. Look at it now. We'll go through it now. Seriously. We'll go through the passage. It refutes your whole theology. He says that no, we'll go through it now. Listen. Please, can we go through it now? Says, you, do you know the passage? It says no father, no son can be held responsible for the sins of the father, no daughter for the sons of the mother. This is all haram, it's prohibited in the Jewish faith, the faith of Jesus. And yet it's the foundation of your religion. This proves it's not from God, because it's not biblical. It's not a biblical faith. Should we look at the passage? So one, you're comparing the holy God, the Lord of heaven. So, sorry sir, I don't want to interrupt your, um, your subject. Are you, you're not from Jamaica? Or Syria? I'm just asking the that sir. The reason why I ask you, if you want the reason I can give you, but yes or no, you're not from Jamaica, are you? I, I'm from here. Oh, okay, so I thought you are from Jamaica. Anyway, I'm, you remind me of a lot of people I know in Jamaica. They were mixed Syrian Jamaicans. I'm definitely not from Jamaica. Yes, in the same height, same height. Okay, so, anyway, so come in, come Coming back to Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, we, we, the whole passage is the prophet Ezekiel refuting the idea that anyone else can take on board the, the, the sins and the punishment when they are innocent. You can't do, you can't transfer sin like that from person to person. This is refuted by God's word. And yet you believe this. Why do you believe something that's so contrary to the word of God? Should we look at the passage? I know, I know the passage. Well, that, uh, saying, let's read it. You just read five verses. The first five verses is fine. It refutes your position perfectly. It's not rocket science. It is not difficult theology. The whole chapter says you cannot be punished for the sins of someone else. It's not just. And yet he's arguing that's what he believes, this is faith. It's not possible to do that. It's based on Leviticus, because they used to sacrifice a goat each year. Leviticus, I think, 11, 17. And, and Jesus is that final sacrifice. Jesus, not, made, Jesus, is, not, Jesus is not a goat. No, I know, but that's, he's a replacement. No, but he's not. Human sacrifice, no. The, the, the Bible repeatedly condemns human sacrifice. It's completely prohibited. You can't just switch a goat for a man like that. The Bible well, prohibits it. That's what God did. That's what no, God but let me. The that's Jewish Bible. No, no, that's, that's, that's the claim. That's, 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 no, God that's didn't the, do that's that. What the New Testament teaches. No, but the New Testament is that's not. What the Hebrews, that's so. what the Hebrews teach. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, 1 through 5. When it came to pass in the seventh year and the fifth month and the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the, of the Lord and sat before me. Verse 2. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of, of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are you come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Verse 4. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? 
cause them to know the abomination of their fathers. And saying to them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, I made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord God. Right, uh, okay, I've got a, a an apology to make. It's actually Ezekiel chapter 18, not 20. My mistake, my bad. If we go to Ezekiel 20, which I'll read here. The word of the Lord came to me, that's Ezekiel. The one who sins will die, okay? Not someone else, okay? As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord. So apologies, is 18, not 22. Okay, there you go. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines, nor look at the idols. He doesn't defile himself, and he goes on, he doesn't commit adultery. He follows my decrees. Suppose then, in verse 10, he has a violent son who sheds blood and does all of these things. He oppresses, he commits robbery, and so on. Such, such, such a, a man cannot live. Okay, that, that's the passage. Then it says, he will, will not die for his father's sins. He will surely live. Yet you ask, why does the son not share the guilt of his father, since the son has done what is just and right, and has been careful to keep all my decrees? He will surely live. The one who sins is the one who will die. So the important principle here is, the offender must be punished, not an innocent person. The child will not share in the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share in the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged for them. I mean, it's, it's paragraph after paragraph, Paragraph as a paragraph, the whole chapter refutes your position. Not verse 20, not chapter 20, chapter 18. My bad. This refutes your religion, sir. So, do you believe the book of Exodus is written by God? Uh, what's that got to do with chapter 18 in Ezekiel? Do you believe that it's written by God? Um, that's it. We'll, we'll park that question on the on side. It's a difficult question. It's a different subject. It's difficult? Yes. It, it's difficult. Can, we, can we get to the point? You're, you're diverting to another subject now. Can we? Can we? We are. The, the, the principle of Ezekiel 18 is very clear. This is what God says in Ezekiel, oh sorry, Exodus 34. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means guilt, uh, clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. And how's that related to anything we've been talking about? You just said like, visiting. Uh, yeah, no, you don't, I, I heard what you said. Explain how that relates to our subject. You're saying that it's impossible for a son to suffer for the sins of a father. But he just says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon what? the children. That's different. That's not the same thing. Wait but no, no, let, me, let me explain. Let me explain. Because. <laughs> no, 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 let me explain. No, excuse me. Let me explain why. The fact that other people are punished. No, excuse me. This is going to be our conversation that I'm going to walk Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The, the, the Bible. No, no, let me explain. He was asking me. Firstly, as a point of principle, the Bible is a collection of books. They do, contra they do contradict each other as a matter of principle. I have no problem if there is a contradiction between Ezekiel because the Bible doesn't claim to be the word of God. It's a library of books mostly written by human beings. That's the first point. It doesn't claim to be the word of God. There's not a single verse in anywhere in the entire Bible that says it's the word of God. I promise you, dude, there isn't a verse. Uh, it's, 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 it says the word of the Lord came. It says all scripture is God breathed. Yeah, but that, that's a quote from 2 Timothy 3.16, is it not? If you read that in context, which Christians never do, it's only referring to the Old Testament. It's not referring to letters written after Paul or the Gospels. It's not written. It's not written about the New Testament, dude. No, 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 you can't. Of course I can. No, well, I'm talking. No, because we are seeing the Bible. Do you mind? I'm, 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 I'm trying to have a conversation. No, but you are killing the Bible. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, 
you are killing the, you are killing the Bible. Okay. And you are, you are, you are, you are, you are do, do you understand that 2 Timothy 3 16, read so in context. You are killing the Bible. You are killing the Bible. Okay, fine. You are killing the entire faith. This is not an argument. You are killing the Bible. In context, the scriptures that Paul refers to are the Jewish scriptures. They're not the New Testament. Would you like to refute what I've just said? Would you like to counter what I've just said with any evidence at all? I, I can give you plenty. No, not you, sir. Yeah, him. No, no, but, like, but I'm not sorry. talking to you. I'm talking no, to like, him with respect. What you are saying doesn't make sense. But, but, no, you're being very rude here. No, but, like, yes, you are. It doesn't matter if I am or not. I'm talking to him. Is there anything you can say to in any way refute what I've just said? That that verse in 2 Timothy 6 is not talking about your Christian Bible. It's only talking about the Old Testament in context. So the Old Testament is the Word of God. Do we agree that Paul is talking about the Old Testament in that passage? I just asked you a question. The Old Testament is the Word of God. Paul thinks so, yes. Do you think so? No. So the Exodus is not the Word of God? No. The point, you're not answering my question. Does Paul refer only to the Old Testament in 2 Timothy 3.16? What you're speaking about is the iniquity of the fathers. Yeah, okay. Well, you changed it to this. You, you changed it. Okay. I think you realize it doesn't. Not because you're not, you're not answering the question. It the does. Bible does not claim to be the Word of God anywhere. Of course it does. That Exodus is the Word of God. No, I never said that. I said that the Bible is a human product, largely, of, 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 many, of many texts. There are contradictions. Even if you were right about Exodus, and I'm not agreeing, if you, for the sake of for the sake of your argument, no, sorry, let me. Let me Hi. I'm sorry. He's walking off. He's he's walking off. So, folks, he he uh, he doesn't have an answer. Um, so. We all know how they go on. He he. Uh, and unfortunately, this other chap on the left won't uh, stop interviewing. He interviewing many times. He was yeah. So they, they can't. They can't. If, if you put what they're saying under some scrutiny, it can't stand up usually. So. I don't know who's these. Can I give this to you? So I think once um, 